Personal computers have shrunk significantly in size in the recent years, and there's a new one on the market. And in today's video, I'm taking a look at the Pantera Pico PC. This was sent to me. This is a successful Kickstarter. I'm gonna take a look at this tiny desktop PC. It has Windows 10 installed. I'm gonna take a look at the eight gigabyte 256 model. And in today's video, do a first look, look at what it can do, see if it can run some games and give you my thoughts. So sit back, relax, you may wanna grab some popcorn. Let's take a look. I thought it'd be fun to compare this to an Ouya. It is about half the size, incredibly small. It does come with this travel case, really nice if you're taking it on the go, as I think this is the benefit of this tiny desktop PC. Here it is. Uh, they sent me uh, the red colored one. As you can see, it's got three um, USB 3.0 and one 2.0. It's got a, a TF card slot, so you can add additional storage. Very nice. It does have its own power supply, which fits snug in the travel case. It does come with simple instructions how to get you going and you know I just was running this with what it came with I didn't do any additional downloads or firmware updates it does come with this additional pouch in which you can take it on the go and thought that was pretty cool as well here's some of the specs of this tiny PC as you can see, it, it offers quite a bit in a very small package. This is not a gaming PC. This is set up to do basic office functions and definitely gonna be a retro gaming PC. I like the rubber bottom. It was nice, it didn't slide around and the fan was fairly quiet. It does have a light on top. That's really to help you tell you that it is on. Uh, you know. Initial setup did take a while, as it does for any uh, desktop PC. Um, it, it took me a bit to kind of uh, get it going, but it's cool that it does uh, have Windows 10 included. You can put another operating system on it. I thought that was pretty awesome too. Just for fun, I thought I'd do a benchmark test on it. And as you can see, it's not a gaming PC, but really for the size. This is for people that uh, may want to need a, a, a standard PC to do office work, maybe browse the internet, do some YouTube. Uh, this is what this is for. But I'm going to try to run some retro games and check out a Steam game as well. So here we go. One of the emulators that showed on its Kickstarter that it could run was Redream. And I know there's a lot of people out there that want a, you know, kind of a, a retro PC or a, a media device to run emulators you know and dreamcast is pretty popular in emulators and so i thought i'd show it and it's running great you know this is a great option for people that don't want to collect retro games and just play them you know uh, you know i'm using a 360 controller which i i, I popped into this thing and it, it acknowledged it the first time and it's just really cool that there's devices out there many to be in fact that can play these games and so soul caliber to me is near and dear to my heart you know i worked at a software etc when the sega dreamcast came out and so you know this this is a, just a timeless classic and it looks fantastic here and so uh being able to run this and it seems like it's running it rather well you know again i don't have a lot of experience with redream it doesn't run everything but it does show that it can run about 95 percent of the dreamcast library pretty sweet and many of the games uh seem to be running great you know if i if i was playing this uh on a large monitor i'd be very satisfied with it and you know all the options of a, uh, a Windows PC, so there's lots of different settings you can tweak with. That's kind of the advantage of these media devices. And so uh, I, I give it a thumbs up with the being able to run a Dreamcast emulator, no problem. And then there's game devices such as the PSP, which are very popular to emulate. And I thought I'd show this emulator, which actually includes Cave Story. And I thought that was kind of neat. And so, you know, this is what I think is the strength 
of the Pantera Pico PC. Yes, you're going to want to be able to do office work, and I'm sure it can do that. But for me, and for I think a, a, a majority of people out there, these are neat little media devices that can emulate and play retro games. I think that there is a bunch of people out there that, hey, they just want to play games. They want to have a device that can play a multitude of different games, doesn't take up much space. Because space, you know, really is a factor for many people. You know, there's several people out there living in, in cramped uh, uh, apartments or living areas. And so this is going to cater to that. You know, even a tiny home, uh, you know, there's going to be people out there that are going to want to be able to play video games and not collect them, just play them. I thought it also show Ultimate Ghost and Goblins. And, you know, wanted to show a 3D PlayStation portable game. It looks like it's running great. Uh, perfect, I probably should be able to tweak it in the settings to make it run even better. But that's what's great about emulators, as you can do all that. And, and so uh, the fact that it's running on this, it looks great. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be interested in these features. Now, now these are the features I think that gamers out there really care about. You know, being able to emulate something on a media device how portable is it? How much space does it take up? How compatible it is with various controllers? And, you know, from what I had, this seemed to be very compatible with the devices that I had lying around. I had a, a 360 controller, no problem. I had a, an old mouse and keyboard, and I just plugged them in, no problem. It seemed to be very compatible with the devices that I plugged in. First impressions. I wanted to install Steam and check out Torchlight 2 on it. Now, this is not a AAA title. This is not high-end. It's not going to push hardware. And I wanted to see if it can run, and it runs great. Uh, not optimal, not the max settings, but still. Uh, I had to tune uh, a, a couple of the uh, effects down, but uh, it seems to be running great. And, you know, uh, for, for many people out there, a, a lot of your library, especially on PC, might be indie titles. This is going to run those games great. You know, this is not going to run high-end games as it's not a gaming PC, but that doesn't mean it can't run a ton of games. You know, and uh, I'm a big fan of Torchlight 2, if you didn't know. Uh, I really enjoyed this when it came out. And, uh, you know, this is on my Steam library and, and really, really love that this tiny PC can play games such as this. I think there's going to be uh, uh, people out there that are going to want to play their indie title Steam games, their emulators, playing playing their retro games on a device such as this. This is the appeal of this device in my opinion. So for more information you can go head on over to their website. The link will be below in the description. They talk about its capabilities. There's forums set up for additional support. I like that. Um, is this device perfect? No. Uh, some of the games were slow to download. I don't know if that's just because I'm used to having uh, a gaming PC and you know uh, my gaming PC is more powerful than this small device. So the downloads were a little slow. I don't know if that was uh, my internet or something else. But as you can see, the Kickstarter is successful. There is uh, about 11 days left uh, at the time of me uploading this video. Uh, there's different models. I do recommend at least getting the eight gigabyte RAM. So when it comes down to some retro gaming, uh, it actually is not bad. And so for me as a retro gamer and someone looking to maybe pick up a media device, it gets a thumbs up for me. So there you have it. What did you think? The link will be below to the Kickstarter and website where you can find out additional information about this product as well as the connected products. There's a lot of other products that this company is doing connected to this, accessories, even uh, a projector. And so, uh, you know, it worked. The bottom line is it worked in the, in the games that I played on it. You know, for what it offers, sub 200 price point, pretty great. So more information about it, you can check it out. 
I want to also thank Game Dad, and he's a friend of mine. He's got a great channel, and he helped me with some suggestions, as this typically isn't a, a video that I would do on my channel, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of branch out and kind of see, hey, I can do one of those and talk about this, because I think there's a lot of people out there that just want a game, and it doesn't matter what device it is. And I think this is going to cater to some people interested in tinkering with a new device. So there you go. I want to thank everybody for watching my channel. If you're new, you may want to consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock. Thank you so much, and you have a good day.